Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran Japanese jazz pianist and composer Satoko Fuji. On her new material and COVID life, we caught up with her from her home base of Kobe, Japan on March 11th, 2022. We talked to her about this brand new CD with Joe Fonda called Thread of Light and so much more. She became acquainted with Joe Fonda's musical creativity in 1998 and both have been touring Europe separately in many different group selections over and over again. This new project project was recorded during the corona pandemic separately in their distant homes, hers in Japan and his in New York, and put together for this release. It is music full of inspiration and optimism for a time after the pandemic. It's always great to catch up with her. Enjoy the interview. Good evening. Hello. Hi. I guess it's good evening for you and it's good morning for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> How have you been? Well, um, you know... It's no way, still it's no way to tour abroad. So I'm just, you know, I'm making music in my place. Are there any, I know here in America, you know, mask mandates are going away, things are opening up, live music. In fact, Helen, mm-hmm. Sung, Helen Sung is going to be in Kansas City tonight, which is wonderful. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. what about for you? What are you looking at for 2022 to possibly get out and actually do live performance again? Well, actually, you know, in Japan, we will never stop uh, making music, I mean, at the concert. So no, many musicians um, just, you know, play as usual. I'm one of few musicians that, you know, I stopped playing outside. I mean, uh, playing in the club and concerts. But, you know, like in January, we had three concerts. Next month, we are having some concerts. And finally, in June, um, I'm planning to tour in Europe. So the things are getting back. Good deal. I and I guess, you know, you have been making music. You have a new CD, Thread of Light, with Joe Fonda. Um, I, mm-hmm. love, I love the cover. I love just the art and the sound. And it's so triumphant to know that there's a wave of creative material that's still coming out. So talk to me a little bit about this project with Joe. Well, you know, this is not like as I'm other CDs that we made together. Other CDs, we were in the same room making music simultaneously. But this one, I didn't expect Joe will add some sound on it. I made solo album by myself, recording at my place. And I put it on, on Bandcamp which is like, you know, a um, digital download format that people can buy it. Yes. So I uploaded my solo. I let Joe know what I'm doing. You know, we have been emailing each other because we couldn't see each other. We couldn't play together. Then he was interested in Uh, having some notes on it. He said he even could hear what he should play. And, you know, his part, he could hear, he could listen to it. So he told me if it's okay to put his part. And I'm so glad because I was very curious. It's new way. And I always like something new. So that made me very excited. And he came back with such a beautiful um, music that he put on. So I'm very happy with it. Isn't that something that's been really, I mean, for all the things that have been bad about COVID, I've noticed that musicians that typically wouldn't collaborate have had the chance to because you can do collaborations like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, music can be, we can make music in many ways, not just one way. And that's one of the things that I love music, because we can do anything, nothing wrong, whatever we do, that's it. I mean, you know, and 
we always can find something new. Absolutely. So we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of basically the world shutting down, and hopefully we're on the other end, things are opening up, but my question to you is, how have you done over this two years? What has this COVID time been for you, and how have you kept not only your sanity but creativity up? Of course, at first, I was very shocked because, you know, um, that happened right after my big tour that I toured in Europe and in America, then came back and everything happened. I mean, like, that was like February, that was 2020, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Then, you know, I did not expect something like this. But while I was touring in Europe, actually, you know, I was asked by many people at the airport, so you are from China, and the people were so afraid because, you know, in China already, that COVID-19 was, there are so many people already got. But we didn't expect, you know, it happened in Europe and it happened in America, we didn't expect. And like, you know, a week before, you know, the thing happened in in New York City, we were in some restaurant in New York City having, you know, drink and uh, hugging and uh, it's so crowded. And, uh, you know, that was so, I just couldn't believe it. And I still couldn't believe it because it's something beyond and uh, anyway um when everything shut down i didn't know what i should do but the thing that because many of my concerts in japan had been cancelled and i felt so bad to clubs because many jazz clubs they lost a lot of money and because they couldn't make business. So the first thing I did with my husband Natsuki is selling our CDs to make money and give them to some jazz clubs. And uh, that's the first thing that we did. Since, you know, we couldn't make concerts, we started doing streaming concert on Facebook. I found you know, because I have a piano in my place and uh, I also do have soundproof room, very tiny, but you know, because of that, I can record my play. So I started uh, studying, learning how to use this kind of equipment. So I actually did many, many things. And also I learned how to make session in internet, on internet. I think I did almost everything. And uh, time just flies. I just, I even don't remember how I could manage doing all this kind of stuff. But in the end, I, I mean, I ended up having so many albums. Well, you know, the jazz community tends to be a very creative and strong bunch. So I think the, the new skills that everybody has acquired, whether it's being on the internet or production, I think it's been very welcome. I think it, do you think it's going to make the jazz community stronger when we reemerge? Only the thing that I can tell is, you know, nobody can stop making music. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing can stop us making music. That's the thing that I can tell. People think we need to meet. We need to be in the same room to make music. Well, of course, you know, it's probably the best way and it's very exciting way. But we also can do other things, I mean, to make music. So I think music could alive any place. Absolutely. What do you hope we all, both musician and the audience, what do you hope we all get from live music? We've been away from it for a while since we've been away from it, and hopefully when we get back, what do you hope we all realize about the power of live music? Well, you know, that's actually 
very difficult because right right now in Japan, we can go to concerts, we can go to clubs, we can go to concert hall, and we can play music, but we are losing so many audience now because people are still afraid, which I do understand. And also, you know, people, it's hard to tell, but it's like custom, it's like habit. I mean, some people had habit to enjoy music, like, you know, after work, having some time to enjoy music, but they stopped doing that because of COVID-19. And so some people probably will not come back. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But still, you know, somehow, I think, you know, that's not the end of the world. <laughs> I think, you know, we still have some people, and probably some new people will reach us, will, you know, meet music, will enjoy the concerts. So, I'm very positive. Well, music will not die anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as far as I'm concerned, with, and I haven't been to Japan, but I've only heard wondrous things about the culture and the crowds, and the Japanese love jazz so much. Well, sorry, I don't agree. <laughs> no. It's very difficult to get people, audience, in here, Japan. Okay. And yeah, maybe, maybe just me, I don't know. But I think, you know, many of my friends are struggling, especially young people yeah. now don't go out. For them, um, listening to music is from their headphone, not in the concert hall, gotcha. but not in the jazz clubs. I guess that's the other thing I've heard is that there's a lot of cafes that play jazz in Japan? Well, that's a long time ago, yes. Okay. Um, when I was, yeah, I was a teenager. That was very popular and people appreciated. Now, um, there are still some jazz cafe that we can hear jazz, but people never stop chatting. So it's a little different compared to, compared to like 40 years ago. Gotcha. How can the fans out there support the musicians and hopefully make everything come back stronger? How is Bandcamp the best way? What's the best way that folks can support you and other musicians as we kind of wake up and get back out there? I would like to hear from you. <laughs> I really don't know. But I think, you know, only the thing that I can do is I just keep doing. Yeah. And you always have. You always have been wondrously consistent about putting material out. And um, I think what I've noticed is it's so much better for people to buy or download versus stream. And I think just getting out and seeing live music, I think that's the big thing. I know for me here in Kansas City, when I have the chance to, I'm really consistent about getting out and supporting live music and I think globally mm -hmm. that's going to be the best way to get everybody back up because that's what we've been um, missing this whole time is revenue mm -hmm. and exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Maybe we just need some time yeah. to get back, you know, our normal. Absolutely. Well, and I think that's the positive thing about right now is we're, we've been in this for so long, we're seeing the other side and it's, just going to be like this virus that we've had to live through. We're going to have to take some time to let the world wake back up and get back to it. But hey, it's been wonderful to catch up with you. I know we've been relatively consistent over the years, and hopefully the next time we speak that, you know, you're traveling and things open up more and we're in a better space globally. It would be great. And, you know, I dream to play actually in your town so I can see you, I can meet you in Absolutely. person. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Um, I, I think there's going to be a resurgence and our doors will be open. So um, I will keep my eyes open and be hopeful for that. Thank you for taking some time out today. Thank you for the music and good luck as we move forward. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for you know talking to me and、uh, thank you for listening to music. Thank you for your listener. Thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in Japan, New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world. Giving fans all that jazz, and thanks to Satoko for her time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the Neon Jazz at Blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.